You're listening to The Kylo Show, the podcast where we talk about how to keep your love on no matter what and why whole healthy families are going to save the world. Danny and Brittany are back answering your biggest and most important relationship questions. So if you want examples and practical application for real world issues, then you're going to want to tune in because The Kylo Show starts right now. Well, hello, everybody. We are here on the Kylo Show, and we're still doing something fun. We are doing the Q and A, mixing spot. it up. Uh huh. So keeping it interesting. We we haven't. This is a new thing for us that we have so many fun questions. We're just trying to get through them and I'm, make sure we answer them. I mean, we did some heavy lifting all year yeah, long. I know. I mean, we did some stuff. We were At like the the year, going yeah. through the series <laughs> of stuff, and yeah. We started out deep water. I mean, yep. we were like, we're going <laughs> to help whole healthy families. We had to lay some foundation. Helping singles and helping. We've had all sorts of great series. I mean, we're getting closer and closer to our one-year mark. I know. Mark. It's coming up. This right. is like 47. Yeah. It's this is like very close. Really close to a it. year. We're also pushing close to... Like 500,000 downloads or something. It's wild. I know, just of the Kylo show. We had half a million before that of other shows. Mm -hmm. So we're like coming up on our millionth. Yeah, Seth and I need to get our act together. I mean, mm -hmm. we do mm -hmm. not have this I'm at you, all. I'm telling you. <laughs> but we is... only are once a month, so that's, why. <laughs> that's probably why. But, oh, well. We do love all the questions, mm -hmm. you know, uh, if you're – listening for the first time, how you submit a question is you want to go to thekyloshow.com and there you'll find something called SpeakPipe and that's how you give us your questions. So it's true. It's pretty fun. Super helpful. Yeah. All and, right. And we're changing our whole set before too long. I'm just I'm just getting all in all the <laughs> mixing it up stuff. And so it's all going to be different. Yeah, we're excited. All right. Well, we're going to jump in to our first question, which comes to us today from Brooke. Hi, I just have a question about the whole concept of leave to cleave and what to do when your spouse isn't walking in that um, and how to be supportive to help them really let go of their family and their traditions in order to start a new family and bond together and start your own traditions and um, have the spouse be the top priority, not the family be the top priority um, and how to do that in like a loving and supportive way just because, yeah, it's really difficult when family becomes a priority and you kind of feel like a tag on to their family instead of like you're starting your own family. So yeah, any thoughts on that would be greatly appreciated. I always think about the circles. I know you use them for boundaries, but mm -hmm. then, but I, I'm, I'm always, that's the first thing that comes to my mind when this question gets asked is there's your God spot and then the next ring out and looking over and seeing your mother-in-law or somebody else. You're like, hey, what are you doing in here? What are you still doing in here? <laughs> yeah, it is a hard conversation to have yep. it when the, the family relationship. I mean, can you imagine someday Lincoln kicking you out no, I don't want to think you know? about that. He's nine, Dad. He's nine, and he loves me. I'm the first person he gives a hug and kiss to in the morning. All that, you know. Oh. So the the depth of connection that can be there with a with with a son and a mom is, you know, a, a healthy soul tie right there is. It's an it's an agreement that we adjust it, mm. or it's an injury. Mm. So there's some there's some dynamics involved here that aren't just as easy as the husband saying, "Get out of here, mom! I got a wife," because he doesn't want to hurt his mom. At the same time, you know the mom doesn't want to hurt his marriage. Yeah. So she really has to understand that the the loyalty transfer that that the son feels with his mom. I mean to to. Say no to my mom mm -hmm. and say yes to my wife is a giant adjustment for my mom, <laughs> you know. Yeah. 
and 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 he's trying to protect that relationship and introduce a no like so you guys coming over for thanksgiving no um we're having thanksgiving at our house because that's important to my new number one yeah that's a hard that's a hard conversation my, my heart breaks already just thinking about <laughs> this conversation <laughs> I, I think the other role is as in in a healthy situation is mom knowing that this has to happen mm-hmm. for the success of her son and his marriage. Yeah, and and that probably just hasn't been a conversation between son and mom. Yeah, because son is afraid of hurting his mom. Totally. But uh, so so wife says, I need to feel like your top priority. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't want to be tied for first, and I, and I don't want to be second, and I, I need some movement on this because mm-hmm. it's affecting our connection. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah, those will be some, some hard miles. And maybe even if the daughter-in-law has... A strong connection with mom, mm-hmm. then then mom, she's pretty powerful because she can affect both of them, not just the son. Mm-hmm. So, but if you know if if son and daughter in law work out a no for mom, yeah. mom's gonna have to deal with it. That's just part of being an adult. Is you don't yeah. always get your way, you know. So hey, it's here true. you go, mm-hmm. and we need our own holidays. We need our own traditions i think she brought up and i think that's that's an indication that we've made that Mm -hmm. transition yeah that we have our own stuff we are a unit we are um things happen here that we export and not just we we import things from from that one Mm -hmm. and you know i would say the potential of this conversation being more than one time mm-hmm. is very likely. Yeah, like every November. And December. <laughs> <laughs> sure, every November, December, and mm-hmm. April ish. July. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, but if you're in the United States, I mm-hmm. guess there's. I, I and I would I would extend the level of of grace to understand how hard this would be for your your husband mm-hmm. to have that boundary with his mom um, and, you know, not taking the position of it's, it's me or her choose wisely. Please don't do that. Yeah. yeah. And it's easy to do. It's easy to create an enemy mm-hmm. out of, of, out of the mother-in-law and it's, and it's painful when that happens and it's really hard um, because like we've talked before in other episodes of, you know, when you have a bad guy, you make an enemy, and it just gets really difficult. But to to lean into, I understand that this is probably really hard, mm-hmm. but I need to feel like the number one mm-hmm. in your life here. Mm-hmm. And and so approaching it from a place of love and, and truth rather than anger and frustration, I think it'll be more successful. And then just doing check-ins, like, hey, how you doing? Had that conversation go with your mom? What do you need from me? Um, uh, being a support role is going to get you miles ahead than becoming a, a warrior of who will you choose to fight with in this kingdom battle. You know, it's that that's just messy. Mm-hmm. So um, those and, and knowing that it's going to be more than one conversation mm-hmm. yeah, to have the grace to lean into that and not being afraid to put pressure when there's pressure that's needed. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you don't have children yet, just know that it's going to, it's going to come up again when, every time you have a kid. Yep. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I, I think that's, that's what I would add to mm-hmm. that one. Yeah. And, and this guy obviously has a couple of powerful women in his life. You Most know? likely. Yeah. And so the, the reality that this is going to be a, Hard. Negotiation, <laughs> you know, is pretty high. Yeah. But uh, 
it's worth it. Yeah. It's worth to make the healthy adjustments and uh hundred percent. Yeah. And and mom mom will get it. Mm-hmm. As long as it's done honoring, you yeah. know, honorably and and uh with the with the Kylo five in mind, mm-hmm. you know, like we are going to keep connection as the goal. Uh, you know, this this will work out great. Yeah. That'll be good. All right, Brooke. You guys can do this. Mm-hmm. We believe in you. All right, next question we have comes from Sarah. Hi, Brittany and Danny. Thanks so much for the Kylo show. My name is Sarah. I am 36 and I'm single and I am just um, wondering what your thoughts are on roles of women uh, in relationships. Um, I've been in Christian leadership, ministry and international missions for the last 18 years. And, uh, you know, currently with the where global trends are with, you know, women empowerment and that sort of thing, feel caught in the tension between um, knowing who I am, who God's created me to be, which is a very assertive, confident person. And how do I bring that into possible relationships um, and getting to know guys? I'd be really interested to hear uh, your thoughts on that. Um, How do I maintain um, who I am and the way that I see life and interact in relationships and um, what does it look like uh, in my role as a godly woman? Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, the sad commentary there is I can't be a powerful godly woman. Yeah. <clears throat> like, ouch. That is what she probably potentially be running into is she's afraid that that's going to be going out the door as soon as she finds a man. Yeah. Well, it's going to take a mature man to mm-hmm. be in a relationship with Sarah, which should be good news for her. Congratulations. Yeah. Sarah. Good job. Um, it, it's, it is uh, probably less in this generation than it has been in all the ones previous, but there still is a, a, a fair residue that there's some sort of a expectation that women will be second class mm. in, in power. It's mm-hmm. usually about power. Like, all right, we're going to have a, um, we're going to have a hard conversation, honey. You know, I'm the husband. I'm the covering. The, the I, the house. I have the, uh, uh, the veto power in this relationship, you know. And it's like, well, that's not helpful. It's not helpful to, for a guy to think that, you know, uh, your opinion matters, but not as much as mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's not very fun. <laughs> no, no. And that's just not going to go uh, well, Sarah, no. at all. No. So uh, we had better learn how to listen to each other and problem solve significantly. Mm-hmm. Like if you're, if you're a, a, a leader and you w- work on a team with other people and you pull the, I'm the boss, I make you know the final decision card, you get away with that. But eventually you wear your team out with that and powerful people start just going away. They they either go away or they get really passive aggressive mm. and they happen behind your back. Yeah. And then the resentment starts to boil up in the the group mm-hmm. meetings and you're trying to figure out what's happening to my culture? What's going on? Why are all these people being so passive aggressive and or resentful? Mm-hmm. And it's because you sent the message that, oh, yeah, your your opinion matters just not as much as mine. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a value, that message that you communicate when you learn to listen well. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying, you know, that I don't have as powerful of a, an opinion as mm-hmm. the people around me. I surround myself with powerful people. But they're accustomed to shaping the decision because once I find out what they need, once, once you, as a, as a leader, whether you are the CEO of a corporation or uh, a, a, you know, a husband or wife, you are sitting at the, the conversation hopefully able to communicate what you need in the decision. What need do you have that this decision has? Because it turns into a, 
Well, are we going to meet my need or are we going to meet yours? Right. Well, we've already met yours three in a row. We're meeting mine this time. Like that's a terrible approach, yeah. but a lot of people do that. Mm -hmm. So we say, what are the needs we have? Okay, we have these two needs. The solution that we create has to encompass <laughs> the both these needs. Mm -hmm. So we make a bigger, better decision because we're aware of it. And, and the bigger your team is, the bigger your family is, the better you get at this. You mm -hmm. start you start thinking like, okay, we don't just have two needs to get met now. Yeah. We have five needs to get met now. So that's the success of leading your family is that you are paying attention to the needs of your whole family mm -hmm. when you decide where we're going to vacation or what you know what we're going to do when we get to grandma's house or mm -hmm. like okay uh, somebody needs to run around a lot and somebody needs a book to read okay so we're bringing a book <laughs> and we're going to stop twice to yeah. let somebody run around a lot and these are solutions that you get better and better at making mm -hmm. because you think bigger than win or lose mm -hmm. So Sarah's question, I, I think, is a beautiful one because I'm a powerful woman. I like I like her question. Mm -hmm. And the reality of finding um, a man that has value for powerful people mm -hmm. um, and value for her giftings mm -hmm. are, are going to help the success of a potential relationship. Because mm -hmm. if I'm in, if you're with someone that is intimidated by any of those, then we're probably going to throw down the card of I'm the man mm -hmm. and you must submit, which I, I love telling people that, you know, my feisty loud self is submitted to Ben because he does an excellent job of loving me like Christ loves the church. Mm -hmm. And it's a mutual submission. Yes. It, you know, the, the danger for Sarah is to meet someone that she doesn't think will overpower her mm -hmm. and, marry that person and then not respect them because yeah. they're not powerful. Yeah. You know, and that's a common situation with you know, yeah. a powerful woman will or a powerful man will will meet someone that they don't think can overpower mm -hmm. them and then they have no respect. Yeah. And you're like, oh and there's a whole another set of learning journey right there. Yeah. So I mean Sarah, on your journey, if you find somebody defining the relationship course, great resource mm -hmm. and obviously family coaching as and well. uh, have your guy read powerful and free oh yeah and uh <laughs> that'll be fun <laughs> then have that conversation yeah that's a great great suggestion love it good question sarah if you're a new listener to the kylo show and you haven't had the chance to check out our other resources you're going to want to go ahead and do that we have books, courses, and workshops that are available to you at store.lovingonpurpose.com. That's store.lovingonpurpose.com. All the principles and practices that Danny and Brittany talk about each week on The Kylo Show, you can get equipped to do that with additional resources at the Loving On Purpose store. So you're going to want to check that out today. All right, this next question we have comes from Ben. Hi, Dan and Brittany. My name is Ben. I recently discovered your podcast and absolutely love it. I've just ordered a Kylo book and it will be arriving in just a few days. So I'm super excited about that. Your podcast has challenged me to love my enemies. I'm a divorced father of two teenage boys and their mom and I parent quite differently. I've been using the Loving Up Kids on Purpose videos to help build a culture of love and freedom in my home. And she uses more of a control and punishment approach. We don't like each other. We're often upset about what the other person is doing parenting-wise. How do I stop making distance the goal and start making connection the goal? Pursuing her with her love languages doesn't seem to be an option. How do I increase love and decrease anxiety? Thank you both. You're such a gift. It's fine. Yeah. Is that Dan or Ben? I think Ben. Oh. Yeah. I thought, okay. Well. Yeah, that's... Um tough situation yes yeah we're divorced because we can't be in a relationship mm -hmm. harmoniously yeah so here we are we're at we're at odds again and again um i think that part of the issue is going to be 
when we focus on our differences and we accentuate our differences, uh, we, we get scared of the other person ever being powerful mm. or ever being influential. So we keep building in our minds a case that they shouldn't be powerful. They shouldn't be effective in their methods. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's going on in our society today where I think that if you're powerful, you're going to destroy what I'm building. And you think if, what, if I'm powerful, I'm going to destroy what you're building. Instead of really focusing on, we have two young men to build. Yeah. How are we going to uh, emphasize success there? Mm-hmm. What? How can we define, is there a way we can define success? Well, mm-hmm. usually it's respectful, responsible, loving mm-hmm. human beings. And um, I would focus on what the mother's adding to that goal. Like she probably wants the same thing. She has a different philosophy but are they respectful are they responsible are they able to build loving relationships and ask them you know how is this working for you Mm -hmm. and and i would honor their mother in front of them i would never dishonor their mother in front of them i would never try to take away from her being powerful and effective with them and and i would reinforce that Mm-hmm. You know, that she she means well, that she's, you know, she we have the same goal, that yeah. we have the same goal, and that is that you would turn out to be awesome humans. Yeah. And and even asking the question to your your ex-wife of, you know, what what do you need from me? You know, is there anything that I could be helping with when the boys are with me? Is there stuff, or grades? Is there, there devices? You know, have you noticed anything here? How can I be adding strength to, you know, getting to the same goal? Mm-hmm. Uh, so when we come in low, that's one way of lowering that anxiety is I, I want to better this together mm-hmm. um, instead of, you know, I do it my way, you do it your way, your way is wrong, mm-hmm. uh, which is probably the message that is being sent yeah. unintentionally, but that tends to be what happens. Because if you have, you know, say one kid that's got a D or an F in school and mom's getting notes home or emails from the teacher and she's frustrated and she's creating this culture that maybe you don't agree with, but you still have the same goal, which is that there's got to be a consequence. There's got to be something that happens that the child gets their grades up. If you communicate that you have the same heart and goal and they're on your watch, you know, and you put boundaries in play and then they go back to mom and say, okay, well, he didn't have his phone the whole time because he was doing homework um, because he was getting caught up on all his missing assignments. Is there anything else that we can do and we go towards together? I think finding that common goal will really help the structure of where we can meet instead of you're wrong. Yeah, and um, how can I help you? Mm-hmm. What do you need from me? Yeah. Is, is an information hunt, it's not an invitation to be controlled, which is no doubt what he's reacting to from their marriage. Sure. Was if if... I give her an inch, she takes 20 miles. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I can't handle that. So, and right. But what what do you need? Mm-hmm. Uh, how can I help? Yeah. And she says, well, you could do X, Y, and Z. And I say, if I did X, Y, and Z, what need would that meet for you? Because mm-hmm. he's trying to get at, I need to feel powerful with these boys. I need to feel protected mm-hmm. from their poor choices. Yeah. I need to feel connected to them. I need to feel like I can influence them. Mm-hmm. I need to and, and like get at that yeah. instead of, well, if you would just do X, Y, and Z, yeah. then I could, these, these kids would be all right. Yeah. Would you keep undermining everything I do? And say, so what do you need? Mm-hmm. What do you need? Not what do you need me to do? What do you need? And yeah. she won't know what the heck he's talking yeah, about because yeah, yeah. she's, that's n- people not there often t- often don't yeah. talk like that, yeah. but he can be a better listener mm-hmm. than she is a, ta- a speaker. Mm-hmm. And I think even his a pursuit of love languages might not be going well if they don't have a place where the connection is the goal. You know, he's he talked about trying to 
communicate her love languages. I don't know if she's words of affirmation. He's sending her texts or something. I I, I don't know. Well, maybe she's touching gifts. <laughs> yeah. And, and he's like, I can't do either one yeah. of those. So I, I would be bringing respectful, valuable conversation um, in your exchanges. Mm-hmm. And I we that would be where my target's landing more than the pursuit of love languages. Maybe if this o- relationship opens up, you can pursue those, but who knows? So the next question we have is another Sarah. Okay. Hi, Danny and Brittany. This is Sarah. I have two questions for you. One of them, the first one is, um, what do you do as a spouse um, where there's been a pattern of setting a boundary and then the other person repeats it for a little while, then slowly starts creeping back over it, meaning they fix it, everything's good, and then they slowly go back to what they were doing before. And then my other question was, um, can you just give me some simple examples of how to set a boundary in marriage that wasn't just, I'm leaving if you choose to continue down the path that you are choosing to go down. Um, Thank you so much for your work, and I love to hear what you have to say. All right. Well, hmm. I yeah, I don't know what it is that's happening, but let's let's just pick a topic. Yeah. What should we pick? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I don't know. Yeah. What about you know, the oh say, so popular? Yeah. Let's just say that there's some kind of porn involved. I was there. Say yeah. Let's that. just say that. And it hurts like crazy. Uh-huh. And it creates these scary dynamics. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's 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 being fueled by a problem that's not getting solved. Yeah. And it's not because Sarah's not sexy enough. Yeah. Or it, and it's not because Sarah doesn't want sex. Or that you know Sarah's not desirable. Yeah. 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 It's it's that's what I meant. Um, yeah. It's 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 not Sarah's problem. Mm-hmm. Sarah's problem is what am I going to do with the amount of disrespect that is flowing into my life through my husband? Yeah. So if he was screaming in her face or threatening to kill her or punching holes in the wall Mm -hmm. or draining the checkbook, and being irresponsible with their finances. I mean, yeah. at what point does Sarah say uh, that level of disrespect in this relationship is unacceptable? Mm-hmm. I'm I'm not going to do this with you. Now, she, now he has to actually believe that, like, well, yeah, because at this point he doesn't. He doesn't believe that. Sarah can set a limit with him if this is his decision. Mm -hmm. And so he says, I feel really bad. And he punishes himself for a little while. Mm -hmm. And then he's right back at it again. And he's just trying to be a better hider, probably. Yeah. And it takes longer for her to find out before he gets punished again. Mm. So that cycle feels like she's a cop and he's a criminal. And that's not going to solve the problem. Right. You know, that's not going to go away because she's the cop and he's the criminal. He has to figure out, you know, really why is he having such a hard time developing an intimate connection with his wife? And it, it has a lot to do with him not communicating with her, mm-hmm. you know, and he has, he has, an ex- he has a, a reason for that, but he's not opening his heart to let this woman meet a need that he has, and it's usually around being powerful because this mm-hmm. stuff is, this is a, it's a control thing. Addiction is a control. It's about control. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people think it's about pleasure or lust or whatever. Yeah. And any addiction that you have is 
it puts you, you think you are in control of it. Mm -hmm. I'm in control of the amount of thrill, pleasure I get from this being in charge of everything. Mm -hmm. So whether it's food or cocaine or porn or credit card spending or whatever it is, I'm in charge of it until it's in charge of you. Mm -hmm. And now you can't say no to it, and now you are a slave. Yeah. The hard part is her husband has to have a problem. Yeah. And and that's the part where this gets difficult because when you set a boundary – they respect it until then they don't because there's no consequence or there's no they don't believe that this is actually something that's going to need to change. Yeah, and it can't be the, the problem isn't I, I caught or yeah. I'm in trouble. Right. That's not the problem. That's that's definitely not it. And so until this person has a problem they want to fix and want to protect the levels of intimacy in their relationship, the levels of trust, there will be this continued cycle. Mm-hmm. So her questions of what boundaries do I get to place in my marriage that aren't what feels extreme, which is, you know, feel free to come back as soon as you, depending on what it is, because we, we gave it a topic, we don't know what it is, but it could be, you know, it, it's usually something in this realm, but feel free to sleep in the bedroom as soon as you're working on this problem. Mm-hmm. Um or just you know we we are in a disconnect mm-hmm. until we get to each person owning their part of the problem and her, and her part of the problem is setting a limit his part of the problem is the the pain that he's introducing mm-hmm. and so she's like i am not going to pretend like there's not an issue here i love you my goal is reconciliation, but it all depends on repentance, and there isn't any over here. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I said I was sorry. I I think I cried pretty good this time. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I you know I did a good job repenting. No, no, you did a good job apologizing, but you didn't change anything. Mm-hmm. And I don't I don't want I don't don't care about your apology at this point. I need change. Mm-hmm. And there's a there's a there's hope and there's and there's love, but there's no intimacy. There's no reconciliation because we didn't get to repentance yet. And until you get to repentance in any situation, whether it's spending or anger or whatever it is, mm-hmm. you know, it it won't change until there's repentance. So Sarah Reed unpunishable Mm -hmm. and if your husband wants to read it that'd be great but just so you understand that there has to be a consequence that he doesn't just blow through yeah or just get that message that i serve my time yeah i'm out of jail right because people that go to jail don't repent yeah you know that's not that's what jail's for. Jail's to punish. Mm-hmm. It's not for, it, the criminal justice system does not care about repentance. <laughs> they care about punishment. Yeah. And most people in relationships don't care about repentance. Mm-hmm. They just care about punishment. Mm-hmm. So Sarah has to figure out how much she's willing to live in or require something different. And Sarah's afraid. You know, she's afraid. And so I would always say, are you miserable enough yet to mm-hmm. change? Or are you still more afraid? And those two levels, you know, it's generally, you know, people are this afraid of changing something about the way they do life until the misery level surpasses it. Mm-hmm. Now I'm more miserable than I am afraid of of change. So I will change to to get rid of my misery. Yeah. And that is usually when the alcoholism is finally dealt with. Mm-hmm. The rage in the family is finally dealt with. The irresponsibility around 
uh, employment and money is finally dealt with. Yeah. Uh, the 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 issue of porn is finally dealt with yeah. is when the person who's being hurt by it is now more miserable than they are afraid of what anybody's going to think or what's going to happen to me mm-hmm. if I head on deal with this. Yeah. Well, great suggestions on Unpunishable. I think that's a good place. Mm-hmm. Definitely. If you love The Kylo Show and you've never read Danny's book, Keep Your Love On, you're missing out. It has over 2,000 five-star reviews, and the most common feedback is, it changed my life. So if you're looking for a transformational life change in your own life and in your relationships, then you need to get the book, Keep Your Love On. You can go to store.lovingonpurpose.com and get your copy today. All right, the next question that we have today comes from Dottie. Hey guys, just thank you so much for your, (laughs) all that you're pouring out. It's very much appreciated. I saw on your email about boundaries, um, just that the taking care of yourself, prioritizing connection with your spouse, um, and then respect and responsibility in the home. And those three were the, the top three to me that I was remembering. And the first one, taking care of yourself. I get that. Um, my husband passed away in March. And so I don't feel like I have that second one prioritizing connection and fostering relationship with my spouse. Like he and I did that for 25 years. It was awesome. But now my kids, I have three, 18, 16, and nine. And um, the responsibility and respect in the home, I feel like is it's okay. But I just would appreciate tips on how to do that as now a single mom um yeah i'm trying not to cry ouch yes mm-hmm. Dottie, if i could hug you i would yeah mm. well i mean she's she's doing the kylo five there that list you know she yeah she has to stay powerful yeah which means she's she's not uh she's not a victim as a parent, which I think is going to be tempting because, you know, she's in the situation she's, she's in and mm-hmm. she, you know, if you guys just give me a break here yeah. and she's going to have to stay p- powerful with them. Um, she's going to have to win the battle of love and fear in that she can't get scared of losing control. She can't get mm-hmm. scared of them being powerful because they are yeah. and they're going to be introducing all kinds of craziness that she's like oh my gosh what are you doing Mm -hmm. you're scaring me but she has to stay in then which leads her to the next one which is uh, connection is my goal with you guys all right i'm going to protect my connection with you but i'm going to be powerful i'm going to be your mom i'm Mm -hmm. still going to set limits i'm still going to tell you the truth i'm still going to hold you accountable Mm -hmm. all that's going to stay there and i'm going to keep my my communication respectful and i will um, I'll manage me mm-hmm. and I'll tell you about me. I won't tell you about what you're doing wrong or what I think of your decisions or your character or whatever. I'll tell you how I'm experiencing your decisions and what looks like your character at this point. And then healthy boundaries is yeah. you know, she does need to be able to say no when she means no mm-hmm. and say yes when she means yes. And so is this really that important to you, Mom? Yes. Mm-hmm. Hey, can we do this thing that you think's a little crazy? No. You know, she's going to have to hold firm to all those things mm-hmm. so that she can preserve her connection and influence with them yeah. while they face some pretty outrageous, external, confusing Painful. swirls. Yeah. 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 Connection is definitely the first thing that comes to mind for me with with her relationship and ability to influence is stay in that course of, you know, 18, 16, and nine. I got two of those and ages. And I think, you know, my 16 year old keeping that level of leaning into how they hear love and, and really pursuing that well, especially in this, the swirl of pain and, and, and then the, the younger one is the same thing as just 
the the more I can have connection here, the I, I think the goal is that those boundaries have more value. Mm-hmm. Is that when I say no, it's not because I don't care or, or I don't understand or I don't want to have value for your needs. It's really to protect you from something. So that is, you know, when I'm I'm thinking about that level of disrespect that could be rising and different things is, you know, declaring who you are as this family and and the legacy that gets to be carried on, you know, from dad. And I, I would be keeping that in the forefront of calling out who they are and um, and fighting for this thing together. Mm-hmm. I think casting that vision for your whole family is probably something that you you could do well and and mm-hmm. really help them be a team more than ever as you guys process through that. But um, yeah, connection for me is a big place because that I know for my 16 year old, the more connected we are, the easier it is for her to have value for when I have to put a hard no down. Mm-hmm. And hopefully there's a, you know, there's a counselor involved with this mm-hmm. family, yeah. just the grief and the, the confusion. I mean, dad really, um, could have been a real identifier, you know. We we identify as a family because of the you know, one of the one or both of the parents are real identifiers. Like uh, it's common it, it, when older you know, when older couples one of them dies, the only thing holding the family together was one or both of those parents, and then when they that that parent is removed the family dissolves because we really were all connected to that one mm-hmm. one or, or our parents so you want to you want to be sure that you can help your families preserve their identity as a unit as mm-hmm. a whole as we move through your kids becoming independent and yeah. finding themselves and it's like wow this is a this is a big challenge but at the same time it's a it's a great opportunity yeah well, Dottie, we'll be praying for you and, and mm. those three kids as you embark on creating just identity together and strength and connection and, and, and really all that comes in that and grace to your home mm-hmm. and his presence is what we're praying for you for that. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on to our testimony spot. Oh, okay. We're going to so lift up to the testimony. We are. <laughs> we are going to lift up to the testimony. Um Yes, so our testimony today comes to us from Josh. Hi, Danny and Brittany. I just wanted to thank you both for the role and impact that you've had in my life and by extension to the uh, lives of the people in my family and my friends and my church. Just so grateful for the Kylo principles and just the, the wisdom and the love that you guys have taught me. Uh, One of the biggest things I think I've learned through the Kylo principles and through the the teachings is that I'm expected and actually required to show up if I want to have connection with people. And what I mean by that is it's okay for me to have needs. I think I used to have this idea that if I was a good Christian, my needs didn't matter at all. And All that mattered was meeting other people's needs. But what I realized was I was actually trying to control people by pretending I didn't have any needs. And then what would happen would be I would start getting miserable and depressed because I'd have all these needs that nobody knew about and um, they didn't get to know me. I was hiding myself from them. And I just am so grateful that I, I learned that we both get to show up that we're actually, if, if we want to have connection, we both have needs and my needs matter. They don't matter more than other people's needs, but they don't matter less than other people's needs either. So I'm really grateful for that. I'm grateful for the, the Kylo show and the other podcasts that you do um, for the life Academy, the books, and just um, for the impact and um, the way that you've poured out wisdom and love on the lives of people around me. And I'm really working to take the same thing and share it with other people um, because I've been changed. I really want to see other people changed and um, just get to know these principles because I really believe um, that's a, a big piece of what heaven looks like. So thank you both so much. Josh, love Josh. Yeah. He's a good guy. He's a good man. Yeah. 
He's, he loves his family. Yeah, that is, he does. That we've seen. And that, he, you know, that's his journey, really. I mean, be, becoming powerful, being powerful, being comfortable with being powerful. Because mm-hmm. that is another big lesson for a lot of folks is you have to be somewhat comfortable with being valuable. Mm-hmm. And that kind of bounces around and and doesn't find a spot for, especially your more passive communicators. Mm-hmm. They're, they're like, oh, I'm totally fine being nothing and nobody and... Uh, and uh, and then the other end is you know the, you know like I should be the I king. Am I'm the king of the world. No, you shouldn't actually. No. You really need to lose some of that value that you have for yourself. So I know the Bible says that you know have more value or, or respect or honor for others. Mm-hmm. You know, come 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 to relationships ready to serve others more than than you want to be served or to esteem others more than you want to be esteemed. And that's absolutely right. But if you have no esteem, it doesn't take much mm. to treat somebody with more respect than you have for yourself. Yeah. You, you might. So it's really about being a healthy whole person that then uses that strength to benefit the people around you. That's mm. the the intention there. It's not have no respect for yourself and only uh, grovel at other people's feet. It's not at all what that is yeah. saying. But that's what we're fine with when we're super passive. We're fine with, I'll just grovel at other people's feet. And he and he had it, he nailed it. I was just trying to control him. Mm. I was trying to create obligation in my relationships with mm. other people by being able to one day say, I did nine things for you. Yeah. You have to do this one thing for me. <laughs> I have a list yeah. growing. I I love the love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm-hmm. And that for me, I always trying to think about, okay, am I doing a good job loving myself as I'm giving out to somebody else? Or am I, you know, doing the opposite? What where's my my gauge there? And and that seems to be one that helps me understand. Oh, I'm not loving very well. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think I know what love is. I don't. I'm not doing a good job. What, which I would say a struggle I have personally is loving myself. I'm very, I can be very critical in some areas, and then I can be the extreme. So I got, I've got a D personality mixed with the one. So we are just all sorts of fun inside <laughs> here. Um, so it, it's, quite a range. It swings, <laughs> and when it swings, it can be a mess. So. But that's how I gauge it as I, I'm usually trying to go back to how am I loving myself and how is that coming out and loving other people? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, being aware of what your goal is in all those areas is so powerful. Josh is a great guy, and I love that he's helping change the world with healthy families as well. Yep. It's super fun. Fantastic. So. Well, this was another fun Q&A session. Here we go. And we had a great time. We did. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. You've been loving these question and answer episodes, so we're going to keep it rolling and bring another one next week. Never miss an episode of The Kylo Show by subscribing to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or watch us on the Loving on Purpose YouTube channel. Don't forget to submit your questions and testimonies to thekyloshow.com. The Kylo Show is produced by Ali Armading, co-produced by Ashley Beck, Leah Alexander, Anna Hill, and Sherry Silk sound engineer and edited by Taylor Silk and show promoter Christian Zamora. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.